Uh, I'm guessing there aren't that many of us who have kind of direct parental responsibilities that are here this evening. Uh, so I'm glad the title hasn't put you off. And in fact, of course, I want to assure you that this topic has relevance to everybody, of every one of us here, uh, especially, of course, if you call yourself a child of God. And I'm guessing all of us uh, would do that. Uh, because whatever parenting advice we're given in the Bible, it's always modelled perfectly by our Father in Heaven in the way that he deals with the often wayward children that he has here on earth. Now, the Pro book of Proverbs is full, of course, of uh, such advice uh, and uh, encouragement. Uh, we've been taking a few Sunday evenings recently to dig a little bit into this, I guess, treasure mind that God has uh, given us. Uh, I think we've already seen uh, its commendation of wisdom uh, and its warning of the, the converse, the opposite, uh, which is folly. Uh, we've seen what it says about gaining and using money, for example. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, we plan to explore its advice when we're faced, for example, with uh, temptation and with uncertainties in life. So we've got parenting as tonight's subject. And I wanna start with a broad observation, uh, which I think you'll find in pretty much every chapter in the book of Proverbs. And it's this, that children uh, need wisdom. Now, the verses that we just read from chapter four, I think was just one example of that. Verse one starts off, listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention, gain understanding. And then if you look forward to verse five, uh, the child here is told that he needs to get wisdom, to not forsake wisdom, to cherish wisdom. Verse nine tells us, uh, about the rewards of, of wisdom and in case you've kind of missed the point there in the middle there in verse seven the beginning of wisdom is this get wisdom so it's the most important thing it says though it cost all you have get understanding so children need wisdom uh yep yeah, i'm sure you know tiny babies look lovely uh, and they're sweet and they're cuddly uh, but they're not actually very smart uh, you don't, for example, go to a toddler uh, generally if you're looking for advice. In fact, if you just flick over to chapter 22, Proverbs 22, I'll, I'll try not to send you too much around Proverbs this evening, but there are one or two verses that are certainly helpful to be looking up. 22 verse 15 says this, folly is bound up in the heart of a child. It recognises that children are not automatically wise. They, they are foolish. Uh, they're like a kind of empty bucket waiting to be filled. And the question is, what will fill that space? Now, now I know some of us uh, here are quite keen gardeners. And we know that if we leave our gardens untouched for any kind of period of time, uh, they're going to be filled with weeds and thorns and, and it will grow out of control. And the same is true of children. If we lead them to find their own way in life, uh, they will end up being filled with what Proverbs here calls folly. Uh, and you don't need to look very far into the book of Proverbs to discover what folly does for you. Uh, have a look at some point, even through this series, it's worth reading through the whole of the book of Proverbs. Uh, and you'll quickly discover that Proverbs makes you boastful. It leads to pride. It makes you... Uh, sorry, folly, folly uh, makes you boastful, I forget what I said there, uh, it makes you proud, self-centered, quick-tempered, argumentative, stubborn, lazy, immoral, uh, and that's just a few things. Uh, as I say, there's plenty more you could find if you were to read through. Children uh, need wisdom. Uh, we all, don't we, we all need wisdom, uh, and where are we going to get that from? Well, uh, the book of James, I think some of you might be familiar with this uh, quote from the book of James, it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously, because wisdom, wisdom comes from God. Uh, but listen to this quote from, uh, don't bother looking up, but 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 22 says this, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, 
a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to, to, to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. So the, the, the wisdom of God, true wisdom, and it, it is bound up in one word, in one person. It's bound up in our glorious intercessor uh, that we heard of this morning. It's in Christ. He is the wisdom of God. So, so if we uh, need wisdom, and of course we all need wisdom, what it's saying is we, we need Christ, more of Christ. We need all of Christ. And, it, and if we seek Christ, therefore, every day, if we continually seek Christ, we will gain wisdom. And of course, that principle, therefore, applies to parenting. If we want our children to be wise, we'll teach them about Jesus. Yes, of course, we're going to bring them to church. We're going to put them in Sunday school or explorers or, or, or whatever. Uh, but we're not going to devolve all of our responsibility to others. Uh, leading kids to Christ is first and foremost a parental responsibility and, of course, a parental privilege. Uh, and it's our priority. Uh, as Proverbs 4 says, get wisdom, get understanding. Though it cost all that you have, get wisdom. Now, of course, that doesn't mean we don't teach our children other things. Uh, yeah, they need to read, they need to write, they need to do math, they need to learn to swim or do ballet classes or whatever. Uh, of course, we're going to pray that our children will grow up to be decent citizens and get jobs and thrive in their relationships. But those things, they don't come first. Uh, in fact, those things become more likely once they've learned to put Christ first, once they get wisdom. So look at chapter 4, verse uh, 23, a little bit further on from our reading. It says, uh, and this is a verse I've quoted elsewhere, I think, in the last few weeks. Above all else, guard your heart from, for, for, for everything you do flows from it. So getting wisdom uh, and guarding our hearts are essentially the same thing. And everything else that you do, it says, will follow from that. You remember that Jesus said, come to me. We saw that from Matthew 11 last week. If we're children of God, we will gladly, regularly respond to, to that call. We'll keep coming to Jesus day by day, hour by hour. And not only that, we'll bring our children to him in, in our words, in our uh, prayers. Uh, and I trust not only our own perhaps physical, biological children, we'll, any children, children within the church, we'll want to bring them to God in our prayers Jesus said in Matthew 19, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Children need wisdom. So that's the first just general point. But the second uh, general point is that children need discipline. Uh, let me read the rest of that verse from Proverbs 22, uh, verse 15. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child but the rod of discipline will drive it far away. It means it will drive folly far away, not, not the child, of course. Now, I, I reckon some of us might struggle a bit with this. The, the, the rod of discipline. Uh, now, certain parts of today's culture, of course, would, would call that abuse. Uh, maybe as Christians, we might sort of vaguely rather that wasn't in our Bibles. Uh, but of course, we can't do that. Uh, it, it, it's there. And it's not there just the once either. It's not an isolated uh, quote there. In fact, there are six other references in Proverbs to the rod of discipline. Uh, just for uh, one of them, two of them, check, flick over to 23, verse 13, where it says, Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you punish them with the rod, they will not die. Punish them with the rod and save them from death. So it's not holding back, is it? It's, I mean, discipline it's saying here is that it saves children from death. So either it's exaggerating or, or discipline is perhaps much, much more important than a lot of people realize. Now, of course we need to be careful 
Uh, this is never an excuse for being abusive parents. We should never uh, discipline in anger. We, we, we need to be in control of ourselves before we ever attempt to be controlling our children. Uh, but at the same time, it's clear that discipline is vital. I mean, you sometimes come across parents who uh, say that they love their children too much to discipline them. And, and uh, of course, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, here's, uh, I won't ask you to look this one up, but Proverbs chapter 10, verse 17 says, whoever heeds discipline shows the way to life, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. And that's right, out of control children turn into out of control adults. And sometimes discipline does need to be physical, perhaps especially when children are, are very young. Uh, it's a fact that toddlers respond to a bit of sharp physical pain uh, a lot more and are quickly, more quickly than they respond to words. Uh, certainly in our experience as parents, we found that a little smack on the hand uh, gets the message across very clearly uh, at the same time as saying no. Uh, and of course, children are not stupid. Uh, after that's happened a few times, they start listening with their ears. And of course, we shouldn't leave discipline till it's too late. Uh, I mean, some of us might have had conversations like this pastorally that it is so hard trying to advise parents, uh, for example, wayward 12 year olds, uh, when you, what you really want to say to them is that they just should have started 10 years ago. Now time doesn't allow us this evening to give uh, too many examples or to go into too much uh, detail, but what I think might be helpful for us, for us to recognize is that this instruction to discipline our children is again modeled perfectly by God's discipline of, of, of his children. So would you turn back to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11, which says, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke, because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in and then that that those kind of verses they're, they're quoted elsewhere in Hebrews chapter uh, 12 uh, where it then adds in verse 7 of Hebrews chapter chapter 12 it says endure hardship as discipline God is treating you as his children for what children are not disciplined by their father God God loves his children we all know that we are precious to him and that means too precious not to discipline. So, so when we're going through difficult times, times that we find hard, we must never ever think that it's because God has either forgotten us or that God is judging us. Uh, in fact, it's quite the reverse. They happen because he loves us. James, uh, again, 1 verse 2, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So these trials, these uh, struggles uh, of life, for God's children, they represent his loving discipline so that we may uh, grow up to be mature and complete, not lacking anything. I've discovered uh, over the last few weeks that in 31 chapters of uh, Proverbs, there are 49 references to discipline. Uh, and I reckon there's a reason for that. Uh, they represent, don't they, the, the, the loving hand of God upon the children that he came into the world to die for. That they show us how uh, we should lead and care for the children that he's given to us. And from my reading of, of Proverbs, uh, yeah, I think that broadly, I think there are three perhaps key parenting themes. We've looked at children need wisdom, uh, children need discipline, uh, and then thirdly, uh, lastly, children need instruction. Uh, you know, if, if discipline was like or pulling weeds from your garden, I guess instruction is like planting flowers. Uh, look at the way each chapter 
uh, the beginning of Proverbs starts from chapter two, verse uh, chapter two through, through to chapter seven. I'm just going to read those now. Uh, chapter two says, "My son, if you uh, accept my words and store up my commands within you." Chapter three says, "My son, do not forget my teaching." Chapter four, listen, my sons, as we've just read, to a father's instruction. Chapter five, my son, pay, pay attention to my wisdom. Chapter six, my son, just keeps going. Chapter seven, my son, keep my words and store up my commands within you. This is clearly a, a father teaching the son uh, that he loves, teaching the son that he cares for. Listen to my instruction, accept my words, he says, do not forget my teaching. And, and Proverbs, I think we've seen already, we'll, be well, we'll see a bit more in the next couple of weeks, it's full, packed full of, of teaching. And the general advice, the, the, the general advice that it gives to seek wisdom is then sort of broken down a little bit into this wealth of specific uh, instruction. For example, how to control your anger, how to uh, restrain your tongue, how to manage your money, how to avoid sexual immorality, how to choose a wife even in Proverbs. And then there are all sorts of uh, encouragements towards qualities such as honesty, self-control, uh, generosity, diligence, respect for authority. Uh, the list uh, goes on. And again, all this time, it's God uh, teaching us, teaching the children that he created, the children that he loves. Uh, and we're wise when we listen to his teaching. We're wise when we pass on his teaching. Uh, when we do that, for example, in a church context like this, uh, and within our households as parents to our children. And of course, if we're going to be uh, reliable teachers of others, we must first be devoted listeners. Uh, if we want our kids to respect what we say, we, we've got to be those who firstly respect what our Father in heaven says. And that means that we should always strive to live under the authority of Scripture, under the authority of the Bible, uh, that we can't and we shouldn't. We should never choose to, to follow the bits we like and, and kind of ignore the bits that we're less keen on. It's, it is all or nothing. And as obedient children try uh, sort of bring joy to their parents, so uh, obedience brings joy to God. Look, look with me at Proverbs, I think this might be the last one we'll look up, uh, or, or, or nearly the last, Proverbs 23, verse 24. The father of, of a righteous child has great joy. The man who fathers a wise son rejoices in him. May your father and mother rejoice. May she who gave you birth be joyful. Children uh, need wisdom. Children need discipline. Children need instruction. Now, I recognise, of course, that's a very brief overview. It probably raises lots of questions. Uh, if you do have questions or concerns, do feel free to uh, get in touch. It'd be lovely to talk about some of these things together. But before I close, I just want to address one question that I'm sure perhaps many of us uh, might have. Those, perhaps particularly with grown-up children who at this point are not following the Lord. Uh, some of you will be pretty familiar, I think, with uh, the last proverb that I want to quote this evening. It's in chapter 22, verse 6. Twenty-two, verse six. Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they're old, they will not turn from it. Now I'm well aware that some of us will read that and automatically, uh, perhaps, have this kind of feeling of guilt, uh, of failure, almost as if somehow the reason my child has rejected Christ is because I failed as a parent. Well, we clearly need to be careful. Uh, in drawing conclusions like that because firstly let's be clear none of us are perfect parents uh, we've all made mistakes and at times we've even the good things that we've done we've done them with wrong motives uh, and if our children do grow up to love Jesus it's certainly not because we've got everything right as parents 
And it's all because of God's amazing grace. And then secondly, let's recognise that proverbs are not guarantees. Uh, they're never meant to be uh, guarantees. I think, uh, as we've seen already, looking through proverbs, I, I hope that point has been made very clear. They are uh, generalisations. Uh, if you do this, then in general, that will happen. If you behave like that, then these in general will be the consequences. We need to remember, I think, that, that Cain and Abel had the same parents. One of them loved the Lord and the other clearly didn't. Esau and Jacob, another uh, examples. Uh, I'm sure we can find other examples of, of godly parents where Eli, perhaps, where none of his children appeared to follow the Lord. So the Proverbs are given as a guide for the future, uh, but they're never to condemn us for the past. I hope that's helpful. Let's take a moment to pray, shall we? <clears throat> Father, we thank you that you care for us as your children. Uh, you've done everything to make us your children. You died on the cross uh, so that our sins would be forgiven, so that you so that we are made perfect in you, that you might adopt us as your children. Uh, and we thank you that as your children, you do discipline us, uh, even when we struggle to understand why that is, uh, what purpose you have. Uh, we thank you, you don't, don't just leave us uh, and, uh, and sort of wait and see how we turn out. We thank you that you instruct us, you've given us your word, uh, you've given us the Bible, uh, everything that we need to know about you uh, and about how to live life under your authority. So humble us, we pray, under it. Uh, help us to treat you with the respect that you, as our Heavenly Father, deserve. Forgive us where we fail to do that. And we pray in your mercy, never, never leave us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.